we all got a lot of stuff to do. And uh, I think if we're honest with ourselves, a lot of us would uh, admit that we're not super bright. Because I think OmniFocus is ideal for people who are not super bright. Because that's its own kind of uh, intelligence in, in a real stupid pseudo-Zen way. Uh, it makes me very angry, that kind of Zen thing. But, but the truth is, we do have tons to do. And I think one thing that's nice about realizing you're not super smart is that you can find the compensatory nu muscles <clears throat> to be smart at the right times and then be stupid at all the other times, which I'm super into. Um, and that's what I think, one of the things I think OmniFocus is great for. It's, it's, isn't it a strange balance? If some, some of you are probably new to this, some of you have been with it for a while, but one reason people get, once you spend the time to get into OmniFocus, the reason you stick with it is because it's really satisfying to both parts of your brain, if you're using it in a smart way. Uh, and so you are able to have this kind of ridiculously large, hey, you're wearing a Merlin shirt, that's super cool. Um, I'm not distractible, you're distractible. <laughs> hey look, craft services. I, I picture of Jean Grey, I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, but the, 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 thing that, the thing that I like about, I'm sorry, my timer's uh, being balky. Setting aside the fact that a lot of us way over commit and have way too many projects on there we're never gonna do. Uh, I think we like to think at the wrong times. I know I do. I like to think and think and think, and I have this conceit, stupid as I am, that I can think myself out of practically anything, and that has not worked out for me. I like to think a little bit at this one time and then just be a doofus through the rest of the day. Um, OmniFocus, I don't know. I'm not sure what I would do without it. I would certainly find a way to cope. But it's been a very satisfying process to get into this app. Um, there's a kind of a bit that I do over and over that I'm going to keep limited here. But I have this, uh, this problem with the idea that systems can fix things for us. Because I've gone through this racket for a pretty long time and I've suffered with it for a pretty long time. Um, and I think systems can help you out a lot, but they can't make you think through what you do. They can't really help you understand what you do. And perhaps saddest of all, they can't make you care about what you do. And so if we rely, rely too heavily on all these systems to prop us up, you're never going to be done. Like, get ready, because you're going to be playing with these things for the rest of your life. So what I want to talk about today is one of the greatest things I ever started doing uh, in OmniFocus, and one of the things I wish I had learned about much earlier. Like a lot of folks here, I'm a big fan of David Allen's book, Getting Things Done. David Allen's uh, book, Getting Things Done, is copyright 2001 by David Koch. <laughs> I'm not associated with the David Koch company. No motorcycles after 3 p.m. Uh, so Ethan Schoonover, who's the guy who created Kinkless GTD, KGTD, K Please Don't Sue Me, uh, which was the uh, precursor to what became OmniFocus. Very, very different thing, but kind of conceptually similar. He had this idea that he used to talk about. You, all you Omni Group folks will remember him talking about this. One of the smartest things I ever heard. Um, and I'm going to paraphrase this in my own words, because in addition to being kind of stupid, I don't have a very good memory. I, this, is, this is why this whole racket is good for me. This is all this, uh, you know, um, I forget things, I drop the ball a lot, I get distracted easily, I, I space out at inappropriate times, and I, I also forget things a lot. Won't repeat that one. <laughs> he said, when you're putting tasks, first of all, just my own article of faith, anything that goes into the OmniFocus and becomes a task that's anywhere but the inbox is a little contract with myself. It's a little contract, but it's a contract. I shouldn't put it in there unless I'm really going to do it because it's kind of like, like putting compost into your crisper drawer. Like, why would you screw up all this good food by putting a bunch of garbage in there? But here's what Ethan said. Ethan said, paraphrasing, that whenever you are writing down what your task is, you should write it down as though you're gonna hand it to somebody who's really pretty smart, but who doesn't entirely understand what your job is. And you're not gonna be there to explain to them. This is critical. When you hand them that task on your uh, little index card, um, you're not gonna be there to explain what it is. Do you understand? You can nod if you understand. I'm not looking for sycophancy, I'm looking for the fact that you're awake. Uh, it's two. Why is this great? Well, if you've been using OmniFocus for a while, I bet you get why this is great. Um, first to clarify, like, I'm not against inboxes, I just think inboxes shouldn't be where you live. I, this is something Ken Case, the, uh, the wonderful man, you know, near the, near the top of this organization at Omni Group said, uh, you know, 
People don't use the inbox enough. The inbox is where anything goes that you haven't made a decision about yet. You can go nuts. It's the ultimate promiscuous little friend. Put whatever you want in there because it's okay. You'll get, don't make me cross that off. <laughs> Do you follow though? Anything you want can go in the inbox, but if it goes into a place with a project and a context, like your monkey balls, if you just put a bunch of junk in there. What if you had to start articulating your tasks like you were assigning it to somebody? And why does it matter that they don't completely understand your job and you assume they're smart? Well, smart people can figure things out, but people who don't know what they do will have to have some guidance. So my advice to you in the say it, don't spray it talk, which I think, if memory serves, Chris and Graydon tell me, I think, we spend, uh, I think we spend about four seconds on that title. But the notion is that you should only have to think at the time that you're making that contract with yourself. You shouldn't have to think when it's time to do that thing. That's fine for Merlin. He lives in San Francisco and rides around in a rocket car. I'm going to give you some examples of why I think this is valuable. Oh, you're good. You're, you use Emacs and you're super smart, right? So you can be lobbing tasks into exactly the right context, exactly the right project. You got your iPad, derp, derp, derp. you're putting all this stuff in there. But then what do you got? Like you're writing super fast. You're writing these little things down, right? You can get so good at that. You remove so much friction from that process. If you're not reviewing on a regular basis, you are efficiently lobbing compost into your CRISPR, like a three-point shot. <laughs> so you're smart. You know, you went to a state school and had a hearty breakfast. And so you see call Jim. And then you see call Susan. And you see call Jim. You see, call Jim. You see, call Marion. Call Jim. That's odd. I have hmm, got four, five different, 11 different tasks in here that are called Jim. What the F does that mean? Who knows? You're smart. You wrote it down. You're good to go. But that's the problem. What was it about? Even if you've got the project right there, have you ever had that happen where you got to think about it again? Me no likey make thinky. Me like look at and understand Dewey. Do you follow? You don't have to follow. There's probably craft services if you want to go over. I don't like having to think about that, and I'm going to give you a very specific example from my actual real life that I hope will be useful to you. Before I get too far afield, you're getting the basic point. Think through your work when it's time, and then capture it in a way that makes sense. What are you calling Jim about? I know you've got a project on there. I know you've got 11 levels of context and a time estimate. That's awesome. But what if you said, call Jim about the quarter three results? and you had his phone number, like right, not even in the notes, you had it right there. Because if you pull out your phone, that's a click away. That's resistance, that is friction. I put it right in there. Um, my, uh, my daughter goes to, uh, goes to a preschool, and uh, my wife, who does all the heavy lifting on really pretty much everything in our entire existence, has to do snack. If you've been through this, if you go to, if you get kids in school, um, it's sort of like a company store, you know, like if you're a miner, you go and you live at a mining camp and then they drop you off at the mine and you go and work in the mine and you come out grimy and then you got to go buy a five, five dollar gallon of milk at the company store with their script. That's kind of what it's like to be at a co-op preschool. You do a lot of donating back to the place where you're paying. I hope they don't ever see this. They're an excellent, fantastic organization. <laughs> snack day. You ever got to do snack day? Yes. We have to do snack day. <clears throat> Let me give you a cascade of uh, problematic projects and tasks and why, why I believe in this. Okay. <clears throat> you have been assigned the task of snack day. And so what do you do? You go, into your, you go into your list and you create a new task called groceries. Right? Because all you needed in that moment was to remember that you got to get groceries. Not you, but other people. Yes, you're probably thinking... What a doofus. But have you ever been like jumping on to public transit? Well, I mean, like, which will you know, take a while anyway, but you zip in and you write something down real quick, a la call Jim. Have you suffered from this? And then you get somewhere and you're like, what, what is this? What is it? Groceries, what does that mean? And so you become much more action oriented about it. And so you say, <laughs> buy groceries as the thing that you wrote down. I think people do this. I think people do this. But you are an ace. You are a black belt at productivity. And as a black belt, you go out and say, buy groceries at Safeway. And now you've really concretized what it is that you have to do. Why does this stuff matter? Again, to fall back to St. David of uh, Ojai, 
what's one thing that's great about getting things done is, is yes, getting into like the certain tasks, right? We all, I think, get that we want to accomplish tasks, but it's also something called outcome-based thinking. What will this look like when it's done? Is it a thing worth doing? And how will I know when I'm done with it? And importantly, for our discussion today, what are the physical tasks that I can articulate that'll get me closer to that thing that I want to do? You don't have to read Getting Things Done for that to make sense. If you're not concretizing the things you want to do, groceries is going to sit on your list until your butt happens to be at the Ralph's, unless you understand what that is. So what's a better one? Buy jam. Buy jam is good. What is buy jam for? Because we got snack on Friday. I could have buy jam on there for three weeks. What is it for? That's a task. It's not a project. What is my project? A project might be shop for snack day. Oh, you're like an order of magnitude further along than all those suckers shop for snack day. Shop what for snack day? Remember, I'm real stupid, and it helps me to do this. What am I buying for snack day? OK, that's great. Jam and crackers for snack day. It's always cheese and crackers. Honey, what would you have for snack today? Cheese and crackers, crackers and cheese. Quesadilla. It's a, hey, you know what? I work alone. Now, feel free to yell out. I don't care. Um, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Maybe if you write down snack day as the thing, like, what are you going to do when you get to the Safeway? Sharp. Okay, do you buy a Vogue magazine? You bought jam? Okay, this is where it gets real fiddly, but I believe in this. Snack day is a project with subprojects. This is how dopey I am. I think there is a project inside of this. Could be a folder, could be a project, however you want to work it. But there's going to be a project called, I've got to go fast project called Do Snack Day on Friday. Good enough. I know what that looks like when it's done. The kids have eaten. They didn't die. Snack day. Boom. Sub-project number one, plan snack day. Project number two, shop for snack day. Number three, prepare the food for snack day. That sounds so dumb and so, as Tim Gunn would say, overworked. You know, there's something beautiful to this. Once you start saying, buy jam, buy jam's not a terrible place to start. What happens when you say, buy jam? Buy jam for what? Buy jam for snack day. Okay, how will I know when snack day is done? Oh, I need to make the snacks too. Does this matter? It matters. Because every time you realize a dependency, you're getting closer to what you need to do. If you do this 10 times a day, mostly in the morning like these Sparks does, you're going to get great at this. That little task, you're not done once you've written the task down. You're not done once you've made it. A project. You're done once you understand the project well enough to be a dumb, dumb butt and still get the stuff accomplished. I don't remember who said this first. It might have been David Allen. But the time you're least likely to think of buying toilet paper is when you're in the aisle at Safeway. There's a mother, another much more specific time that you tend to realize you don't have toilet paper. <laughs> and it's not contextually useful to be aware of that. <laughs> So why would I want all those projects? Well, maybe I don't need them. But let's take it to another level. Let's take that really specific idea about articulating your task a little bit further. What if this is my wife's project, but she's super duper busy, and I'm the one who has to go to the store? How useful is buy jam and snack day at that point? Because brother, you do not want to trust me to do snack day shopping. It helps to be super specific. And let's just, this is, we're from California and real, we're real dumb. By, by, was it by jam? What was it? Okay, what flavor? Any food allergies? Locally sourced? Organic? I have to call my wife 11 times when I'm at the grocery store. I send her photographs of five different kinds of cracker, crackers, like artisanal wheat thins, because I don't know which one to get. Get as specific as you need to be, but probably more specific than you're being now, is all I'm trying to say. You don't have to go through all these acrobatics. <sighs> on the one hand, I feel like OmniFocus gets a bad rap for being complex, and on the other hand, I think it gets a worse rap by me constantly saying that it gets a bad rap for being complex. It can be as simple as uh, on the outliner. It can be as simple as a piece of paper. But to leverage this, you have to, as Dee Sparks and a lot of other people have said, you've got to be honest, you have to be complete, and you have to give as much of an answer as you need to, but it's got to be the thinking at the right time is huge. Because if you're thinking when you're at your desk, you can start with any task or any project, and you're going to go out in concentric circles from that. How about this, guys? Do you need anything else from the grocery store? Do you only go to the grocery store when you need jam? Well, that's the power of context. 
context, absolutely, you can be totally fiddly. But that's like getting mad at hammers. Like you can use them or not, you can get good at it or not, or you can just get out of carpentry. So I don't know if that makes any sense. It probably doesn't. But when you're sitting there figuring this out, I've run long, you, that's <laughs> what she said, but you, um, <laughs> You guys, are, you guys are rough. Why does this matter? It matters because it's your life, guys. And when you sit there and go like, ah, burp, I don't need this. Well, you just paid a bunch of money for one of the best applications ever made, and you might as well use it. If you're going to go in and do context, you know what? There have been lots of great speakers with lots of great things. I got two, two pieces of advice for, for context. In addition to the specificity, be incredibly parsimonious about any of the con Get as many contexts as you need to complete your work, but don't make them just to make them. But on the other hand, Ray, I want to blow your mind, use as many location-based contacts as you can because it is incredibly useful. I, can't, I was telling Ken Case last night, I can't believe how that's gotten huge for me. I got to get out of here. Uh, lucky for you. Uh, you know, I think a lot of us are going to be hanging around at some point at various times, so you can come up and talk and stuff, and it's totally cool if you want to hang out and make fun of us and take pictures and stuff. And we'll, not, not in a weird way, but like we could totally... It could be fun. Don't make it weird. Don't make it weird. Yeah, it's worth getting specific, though, because when you're sitting there at the Safeway and you're staring at jam and wondering what it's for, you're, not, you're, sa you're a little sad because you don't know what you're doing anymore. That's my daughter's thing, and I want it to be good, and I don't want to be sad at a Safeway. I don't want to be sadder at a Safeway. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to come here and talk for five minutes and 23 seconds too long. Uh, this is a fantastic group, fantastic apps. Uh, they are out of their minds to provide the level of support and polish that they do, and believe me, they do. I'm not just here to kiss their butt, I'm here to kiss your butt too, but uh, I'm very grateful for this company and what they've made and the amount of polish that they put into it, and they know whereof they speak with this stuff. So there's a lot of smart folks here. Uh, some of you were here earlier, but I would take the opportunity to talk to those folks from Omni Group and also talk to us. We will, you are amongst your, uh, your people. You do not have to be embarrassed about what a dork you are. <laughs> you know... I realized on the way here, this is, this is nerd lingerie. <laughs> it's, it's for me, and I just like a little bit peeking out. Anyway, thank you very much for your time, everybody. I appreciate it.